My name is Cool Bob, bringing you guys Random Podcast number 44, and this is a li another live stream edition. This is like two live stream videos in a day. I had some issues earlier on with live stream or with Twitch TV, and hopefully they're all fixed. But for some reason, it kept dropping me. I don't really know what's going on. Maybe just Twitch TV hates me. Maybe they think I'm too cool to be casting online because I'm cool blue at the end of the day. Cool blue. Yeah, you know, why not? But anyway, um, we're jumping, like I said, we're jumping to a random pub. As always, I'm part of the random pub. I do not know who's, go who's in the pub uh, going in. I might recognize a name because I have done only 43 of them so far. So more than likely, I might see a name I recognize. Like I, uh, in the last game, I saw a name I recognized. I was like, oh my gosh, I know that person. But anyway. Uh, this game is still loading up. Hopefully, it doesn't take forever to load. And if it does, then I'll continue stalling. Um, I, I guess I can tell you guys really fast. Um, I am working on an intro video for my videos. Well, intro, yeah, intro clip for my videos. So that way, uh, I won't scare you guys half to death when my video starts because I know I scare myself half to death. When my video started playing in the background, I had my volume turned up a little bit too high, and I was like, "Oh my God, where's, where's the mute button? Where's the mute button?" So anyway, uh, the intro video is, is going to be like a six-second long video. It's going to be just nothing but like a little. A logo, my logo is just turning in circles. That's really it. Nothing, spa nothing fancy, nothing special. Um, I am, I am making everything myself. So I have, uh, I have looked at a whole bunch of open source uh, stuff because open source stuff is easy to deal with because you don't have to worry about asking for permission for stuff that you make and blah blah blah. Like OBS is open source. Um, Spotify, well not Spotify. Spotify is not open source. But anyway, all that aside, um, that's what I use for all my stuff. So um, I'm using a program called Blender. Some of you might know about it. Some of you might not know about it. And long story short, um, I don't know anything about graphics, graphic design. I know how to draw. I like drawing all the time. I'm a, I'm, I'm a natural artist, I guess. You can put it that way. I just draw a lot. But anyway, uh, so I had to learn in the past day how to draw stuff with polygons. And it was not fun. Everything's coming along now, but, uh, man, I'm so stressful. But anyway, uh, we're, let's, let's, let's stop talking about everything else on the side. Let's talk about some Dota stuff. As far as Dota stuff goes, we're jumping ourselves to an all-pick. And like I said, this is, all, this is a random podcast, so I do not know anybody coming into this game. That's what's implied. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, um, but you guys will find out when I find out, which makes it more fun for both of us. So that way, it's always interesting. It's always crazy. Something weird can happen. Something nice and standard can happen. Hopefully, it's not one of those one-sided raffle stumps because those aren't really fun to bring to you guys every single time. But we have, I have seen a lot of those in the past on these random podcasts, especially when I do team matches. It's funny um, because you have like this one team that, that has like 7K gold in the first minute, and then the other team has like 7K deaths in the first minute. It's like, how did you, what, how did you even manage to die 7,000 times? But anyway, so enough of all that. Enough of all this nonsense. Um, my overlay switch, everything is good. I'm streaming at how many frames per second? I'm streaming at 12 frames per second. Heck yeah, best slideshow okay. ever. And let me go ahead and do introductions outside of the rating side since they're all picked up very conveniently for me. Start off with this Pudge. On this Pudge, we have Zumanaha or Zumahana Zaham Zahana Zuhana Zuhana. See, see I, I knew if I just pronounced it a few more times, I'd definitely get it. On that Pudge, moving on to this Doombringer, which I'm very happy to see because I haven't seen Doombringer played all that much. I've seen him in like maybe two random pubs in the past two weeks. No, I uh, see Pasarel or Pasarel, Pipasarel, 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 Papel. Don't really know. Uh, on that Doombringer. And moving on to this Lone Druid, I see Stanisfield, Stanisfield on that Lone Druid. Pretty darn cool. I think that might be a uh, Game of Thrones reference, but I, no, never mind. His name was Stannis. It wasn't Stanisfield. Anyway, uh, if, you, if you guys don't know about the Game of Thrones series, definitely go check it out. It's a really good series. I'm going to plug it a few more times. But anyway, I'm moving over to... Oh, reference it a few more times. Moving over to this Tuscar, we see... Queel... Quee Queel... Wind. Quee Queel Wind. Quee Queel Wind. Jeez, that's so hard to say. All that Tuscar, he's going to admit that's going to be fun to see. And last but not least, on this Troll Warlord, we see Yobi. And he's going to be running down the bottom lane. So yeah, pretty cool for him. Moving over to the dire the side, to start off with this Beastmaster, we have Vile Smiley Face, all that Beastmaster, I think I recognize the name. Uh, we Moving up to Bad Rider, we see Muse, Muse 2K, or Music, which however you want to pronounce that. On the Bad Rider, and on this Ricky, we see Xenon960. Five seven four three seven. I'm pretty sure it's a phone number, so definitely go check him out. Uh, definitely go call him and say, "Hey, what's up?" Or say, "Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's your number." So I called you, maybe. And <laughs> uh, moving over to his life stealer, who's the one who's just DC'd. We have Red. He's obviously supporting. Um, I think I think it's cancer in general, just uh, cancer support. So yeah, guys, definitely definitely support the cancer research because cancer research helps people or gets people closer and closer to staying alive and with cancer. And I mean, that's really all I can really say about it. I did recently lose a friend because he had cancer. It was like it was like a weird instance. I like once, or sorry, 
in the course of one semester, he found out he had cancer, and then he had um very he he, he was doing well, and at the end of it, uh, he got an illness. Uh, he had leukemia, basically shut down his immune system, and he, he got a infection, I think, and then he died from that. So that was pretty sad, especially considering the fact I was like, man, I just saw you last semester. It was crazy. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, cancer research. Uh, that's that's the that guy's important. Red. The reason why I'm saying that is because I saw I saw this picture. Uh, the picture was like the little red logo support cancer and, or cancer research and all that stuff. But anyway, uh, Life Stealer is uh, he's on Life Stealer. I think that was the last one. Was that the last one? No, it was a bounty hunter over here. Uh, moving on to this bounty hunter, we have Cell Doe on that bounty hunter. I think that's it. Maybe it's not. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's five. Okay, everybody's all picked. All right, yeah, I called Batrider. Rider. Yeah, everybody's all called out, and we're just waiting on bounty hunter to rejoin. Hopefully, he does rejoin so we can keep this game going. <laughs> A mid tusk. This will be fun to see. Just, just see what he does. I mean, um, t like from what I've seen, uh, Tusk is really good at ganking mainly because his abilities are catered to ganking. But um, playing him mid will definitely like solve the problem because I, I see, I've seen a few people playing down bottom in like a, tri a pseudo tri lane where he was just roam a lot and he was getting XP through kills. And I've seen people run him in the jungle. I've seen people run him solo top. And I, I honestly think mid will be the best choice for him because the mid person is usually responsible for ganking. So put Tusk in mid and he'll gank. And also, Tuscar can set up those nasty engagements. Oh, sorry, sorry, set up those nasty traps where people uh, to make it work to make it to where people can't run away. Oh God, that was hot. <coughs> right, I, was, I was trying to be on ninja like and take a sip of tea without you guys hearing and all, but I mean, Jesus, it was like I just sipped fire and it just destroyed everything in my mouth. Don't worry, guys, I'm fine. I can still speak. That's all that matters. I have no teeth left and no tongue, but I can still speak without a tooth or a tongue. I actually don't think you can really speak without a tongue. Well, may maybe can, just like, not, not not the language that you learn to speak first. But anyway, see, Beastman has to take a little bit of damage because Tusk throw out those stupid ice shards everywhere. And Life Stealer, Life Stealer does reconnect, cool. So all that Life Stealer, we do have Red, he's finally back here. He's going to be in the jungle by the looks of Bat Rider was just in the jungle farming up some creeps. I'm assuming uh, Life Stealer does have himself a Quelling Blade and a Stout Shield. And who's up top? Ricky's up top. So these guys, these guys kind of have weird lanes because they have, um, they have really, really... Gold hungry people. Um, Beastmaster is relatively gold hungry because he wants to hurry up and get his Agonim Scepter. And also his BKB and his Necro Book Level 3. I assume, yeah, actually, no, he won't have to get a Necro Level 3. But if he's playing that kind of Beastmaster, he will get a Necro Level 3. Um, and what I, but what I mean by that kind of Beastmaster, I basically just mean like an aura based Beastmaster. Basically, you um, max your Inner Beast, and then you get, uh, you max your Call of the Wild, and then you get a Necro Book, and then you just destroy everything with your mechanism and all that stuff, all your auras and crap. But anyway. He's, um, he could be playing that kind of Beastmaster, I don't really, I'm not really sure. But you guys will find out when I find out, right? That's what it's all about. So, Lifestealer is in the jungle. No, he's pulling. He's a little bit too low level, he doesn't want to die just yet. He's going to pull his lane. This is a single pull, so this will push the lane. Um, ooh, my gosh, Doombreaker taking a little bit of damage. He's in the jungle. Oh, I need to call out these lanes. As far as calling out lanes, though, as you guys saw before, Tuscar and Beastmaster are in the mid. Going on down bottom, we see a suicide, or uh, we see a double dual lane Pudge and Troll Roller. Oh, got a gauge have on top of Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter's able to get away, and Pudge is trying to see if he can continue to chase him, but no, he doesn't know where he's at. He has not a clue where he is. He has not, he does not have adequate vision. Oh, uh, anyway, we have a Puck, Pudge, Troll Roller down bottom uh, versus a suicide solo lane Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter looks like he's going to be trying to pull the creeps. I know he's looking for a courier. Look for a free kill on but he's not going to be able to find that. Curry is in the air. Curry is flying. And oh my gosh, engagement happened on top. We got Life Stealer going in on top of, uh, on top of, uh, Lone Druid. Lone Druid is taking quite a bit of damage. He will be dying soon. He tried to pop his healing cell, but he popped a little bit too early. He will be dying no way, one way or the other. That's the first blood going to Ricky. Ricky's pretty happy about that. But yeah, that combination I actually never considered until just then, or until just now. Uh, basically, drop your cloud and then throw open wounds on top of them. There's no way you're going to get out of that alive. So that's a really good combination for these guys. Really potent combination for Lone Druid. And I think his, even his bear, really a potent combination for his bear as well. Because Life Stealer can get a lot of Life Stealer Life Leech from that bear. Um, his Life Leech at level 1 gives him how much uh, how much Life Stealer? Let's see. His Life Leech at level 1, or sorry, his Feast gives him 4% uh, HP still. Uh, other maximum HP. Is it maximum HP or current? Rejuvenates a portion of the attacked enemy's current HP. Okay, so 4% of the current HP and 4% of 1,000. I'm sorry, 1,800 is quite a bit, especially early on. Access two points in bear, so maybe maybe it's a little bit lower. Yeah, uh, 1,400. So 4% of 1,400 is like 
How much is that? Let me let me, hold on, hold on. Let me think. Let me think. It's more than anybody else. I can tell you that much. Four percent of one thousand is forty. So that's forty HP per hit. Plus some other numbers on the side, so that's almost 80 HP per hit. That's actually really good. Ricky does get entangled up. This uh, Lone Druid might be able to get killed. Now, Blink Strike from Ricky, he's gonna be able to save his life with that. But if he gets another entangle, I think he will be going out. No entangle for you. Lone Druid's random number generator is not in your favor. Uh, meanwhile, we see Tuscar pick up a haste room. He's gonna throw out a cloud, or he's, uh, he's gonna throw an ice shot around Beastmaster. Beastmaster gets hit with the ulti. Not enough damage, and he's gonna just walk away all casual like. Tuscar are pretty happy with that engagement. His ulti does have a relatively low cooldown. We see an engagement, or sorry, we see Lone Druid being really aggressive up top. Life Steal and Bat Rider are around the corner in the jungle. Ricky does finally hit level 6, and he's going to be stalking this Lone Druid, see if he can find anything. But Lone Druid is going to be, oh guys, Lone Druid is taking a little bit of damage. And yeah, Lone Druid is going to be a little bit trouble. He calls the bear back. He was using the bear to scout to see what Life Steal is coming around the corner. Now he's on the run. He's going to get out of there. Meanwhile, the bear is in trouble. No, the bear does get recalled. And he'll make it up fine as well. So Lone Druid doing a really good job controlling both of his uh, both of his units, moving his hero to dodge everything, uses his bear to scout whenever it has to, just so he avoids unnecessary damage. Uh, moving on to items, I'm gonna take a quick look at the items because I think it took me forever to look at the items last time. Uh, where's the uh, oh F nope let's go with that oh guys we see the game happen maybe we see Tuscar getting the ultimate on Beastmaster Beastmaster's on the wrong side of the river he's gonna be dying to one more attack no B Tuscar's not gonna go for it if Tuscar would have had snowball enough mana for snowball then Beastmaster would have definitely saw an untimely fate he's probably gonna have a courier bring him bring him a healing salve or maybe uh, yeah maybe he's gonna have a courier bring himself a healing salve but somebody needs to upgrade thing or maybe he just asks somebody to upgrade it. And a region room goes to Doombringer. Wow, that, that's like a that's like a slap in the face. Beastmaster could have definitely used that. All he'll do is sit here and throw a few long range axes, try to get a few lashes while he can. Meanwhile, Tuscar has full reign in this entire lane, so he's just pretty much harassed harassed Beastmaster out of this lane. And now Beastmaster will be walking away. Meanwhile, uh, Batrider has been unmolested in the jungle. Nobody has bothered him at all. So Batrider's having a pretty fun time. He's getting whatever he wants. He has tranquil boots and a bottle. Um, I'm not too sure why so many people have bottles, but they do have bottles. Why not? And oh, items! I, I was gonna take a look at items. My fault, people. Oh wait, 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 wait! Top lane, top lane, top lane! Something's going on. Ricky's gonna go for blink strike on top of Lone Druid. Lone Druid, Lone Druid does have his ulti, so he did transform. So he has a little bit more tanky. He has a little bit more armor, but he's taking quite a bit of damage. Will he be able to make it out alive? I don't really know. All he can really uh, see, he will be able to make it alive. Juke around the backside. Bear gets a tangle on Ricky. Ricky, this might be huge. Ricky might be going out. He does go down. Meanwhile, Life Steal might be going down as well. Bear, oh my gosh, a beautiful body block coming from the bear. There's nothing Life Stealer can do to run away, and Lone Druid just goes for him and starts taking on top of Life Stealer. Whoa, Druid playing really good, or really lucky with those random numbers, man. <laughs> he had the beautiful entangle just barely on the outside range of, of the tower vision. Now he will be going down to Ricky. There's no way he's gonna make it out of this. So Ricky just bought, Ricky did buy back to get that kill, so that was almost worth it. I think maybe if, if he would have been able to get a little bit more, it would definitely be worth it. Like, like maybe if there was another hero up there so he can get a kill on top of them, but the buyback is not all that expensive. The buyback's only 308, and he got about. 200 or something. Oh, we see Troll Roll. Oh, guys, we got a gauge coming. Or oh, Beastmaster did come down bottom. Totally missed that completely. Uh, Punch does go down. We got Beastmaster or Troll Roller trying to chase this bounty hunter. Bounty hunter does go down to the ice shards, and Tuscar's looking for something to ulti. He ulti. He ulti's the. Uh, he ulti's the Beastmaster. Beastmaster boar, and the boar goes down. Poor boar. My Tusco's going, um, going to guard the room. He's going to see if he can find himself a beast master. Beast master is going to try to deny the room all he can. And he gets stuck inside the board spot possible. That's what I was talking about. These choke points are deadly. And there he goes. Beast master lost his life because of that. Invisibility. And the room was typing. The room was topping. Invis room for the Doombreaker. Doombreaker does find himself a bat rider. Bat rider is going to walk around the back corner. I think Batrider is looking for a rune as well. Uh, he might be still going to look for it. But Doombreaker does have the invis room, so he's scouting out for his lone druid, let him know what's going on in the corner. There's a central ward placed up here by the lone druid. I think he's might have got donated to him by his allies. I'm not really sure. Uh, as far as his items go, he doesn't really have much of anything just yet. Uh, he has an orb of venom on the bear. He has a quelling blade and boots. He's pretty much playing for bear. He built boots twice, by the way. So that's quite a little bit of gold. And we got a gauge that happened on top of Tuscar. Tuscar will be able to move away. Bad right? if only you had a blink dagger. If only you had a blink dagger. But Doombringer is just scouting out everything. He is level 6, so he can ult the Bat right and go for a solo kill. But I don't think he can do enough damage. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, man, that's some really good tea. Sorry, guys. I, I keep trying to drink my tea, but this tea is really good. Uh, Doombringer will begin scouted out by this 
Bounty Hunter, he'll be getting, oh my gosh, he's gonna be getting, like, destroyed by all these guys. He gets open wounds, he gets tracked, he gets everything on top, he throws the Doom on top, he throws the ulti on top of um, Bounty Hunter, so Bounty Hunter can't go invisible. And Beast has to come by the backside just to make things worse. Flame Break will be getting that kill. But the Doom from Doombreaker did get thrown on Bounty Hunter. So Bounty Hunter's taking a little bit of damage, he'll be able to make it out alive though. And he pops himself a healing self right at the end of that, just to make sure he stays alive and healthy. And these guys will be going for engagement on Tuscar by the looks of it. And yes, Tuscar will be getting engaged. Roar from Beastmaster is everything thrown by Bounty Hunter. And Tuscar, uh, yeah, Tuscar goes down relatively fast. I mean, while we see Ricky, he's roaming. He's finally, he, like I said, he hit the level 6. He's level 9 right now. So maximum and backstab, almost max and blink striker. He's pretty happy with his items. He's going to roam around. Uh, basically, whenever you play Ricky, just you being out of lane pressures every single lane. Nobody knows where you are. Nobody wants to get caught up by you. So if you're playing top lane, like just top safe lane. I don't know. If you're playing the top safe lane and... Uh, you're playing Ricky, and you, you finally got your level six. You can just start roaming all around the map. You can roam over here. You can roam over there. You can just you can just go in a jungle and farm for like ten minutes, and no, everybody will be afraid. Nobody will want to actually push out really. Uh, they'll, they'll buy a whole bunch of sentry wards and then try to push out. But even still, you force them to buy a whole bunch of stuff they don't need. Uh, we see the gauge on top of life still, or on top of Lone Druid. Lone Druid will be getting caught up with the ultra for Battle Rider. Beautiful ice shards from um, from Tuscar keeping his ally close to him, and there's ba Battle Rider going down pretty darn fast. Life still in there, and he's hobbling along. He's trying to build a hand of Midas. He doesn't want to go. Down to he's so close to hand of mine, it's not even funny. He will be investing a creep as soon as he can. No, he gets denied by Tuscar and he will be going down. Double kill for Tuscar. Beautiful play on this ice shards. Meanwhile, we see Doombringer getting caught up by everything. He goes down to the Beastmaster. Ricky is building himself look to be a Yasha before he builds that man or before he builds that diffusal blade. Or maybe he'll go straight for a diffusal. I don't really know. Uh, it, it, all, it all depends on preference. A lot of a lot of people prefer to go straight for Diffuse the Blade because it increases his kill, increases Ricky's killing potential exponentially. Because uh, basically he can drop his cloud and diffuse or throw his diffusal on top of you, or what's, what's it called feedback? I think it's called feedback. Whatever it's called, he can throw it on top of you and you can't run away from. Mm. Sorry about that, guys. My internet is blinking over here. It's not good at all. Which is why I wanted to do all this at once before I started to do extra stuff. But anyway, like I was saying before, Ricky. Um, Usually you see Ricky go straight for that diffusal blade, but he's not necessary when you have a life steal because life, whenever life steals around, Ricky has a free has a free slow or free way to keep them inside of that cloud to where they can't run away. And oh by the way, he can go for a straight for Yasha. Anyway, you see Gage Avatar Beast Hunter, Beast Hunter get hit with everything. He goes down. Uh, Bounty Hunter did throw a track on top of Tuscar. Tuscar is going to be throwing his snowball and he gets a beautiful ice shard. So there's three people out here caught out, but there's Punch going down, finally going down. Uh, he was not able to suicide with that rot, and Tuscar might be able to make it alive. Yes, Tuscar, no, he's getting slowed by everything. Sticky napalm, everything thrown on him. And he's going to turn around, throw the ice shards, catch everybody in the corner. Tornado stick activated on top of Doombringer. Doombringer is going to make it alive. Meanwhile, Ricky might be, yeah, Ricky will not be able to make it alive. He silenced, he can't turn invisible right now. Track from Bounty Hill, throwing on top of Drew. Lone Druid. Lone Druid activates the Warcry. He's going to try to go for, do as much damage as possible to his, to his lifestyle. Lifestyle does go down. Troll Wall is coming in. Troll Wall throws out his ulti. He also throws out his Whirling Axe. Bat Rider gets caught out. Beautiful and Tangle from the bear. And this Bat Rider going down. Those random numbers definitely helping these guys out. And Lone Druid will be going out to the Bounty Hill on the backside, though. And Bounty just barely make it out alive. He will be able to TP out and make it on home. So he'll be the sole survivor of that entire engagement for the dire side, that is. Uh, Beastmaster was the first casualty that we saw, and yeah, so I mean, B yeah, like I said, Beastmaster was the first casualty we saw. Uh, Tuscar threw on some beautiful ice shards, but it was not enough to keep him alive, so he did go down, and Lone Druid went down to the bounty here at the very end. Pretty funny kill, pretty comical kill. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ice shard snowball, this is um, everything getting thrown on top of <laughs> Beastmaster. Beastmaster going down pretty darn fast. Tuscar able to get the kill with that ulti. Dyer's middle tower. Under and meanwhile, Bounty Hunter is waiting around the corner trying to see if he can deny this tower, but I don't think he'd be able to. And that's, that's, that's really, um, oh, items, items, as far as items go, let me go and talk about the items. I was about to say, there's really nothing to talk about, but of course there's stuff to talk about. I can talk about the items, I can talk about the gold graph and the XP graph. Starting off with the items, uh, Tornado Stick up on that Doombringer, he wants to move fast, he wants to be able to have that ability to stop you from running away, really. I don't really know. Um, the true thinking behind him getting tornado stick, but he wanted tornado stick, so he got one. <coughs> Moving on, we see uh, Lincoln Sphere up on Troll Wallard. That's pretty interesting. Uh, okay, that definitely helped out that. Uh, no blink strike for Ricky. Ricky will be running away while he can. And more lag happened on top of my part. Track from Bounty Hunter throwing on top of Troll. 
And Pudge was able to get a hook on top of somebody. I didn't see who it was. Oh my gosh, Pudge is surrounded. Pudge will be going. No, he will not be going down. His teammates are on the backside. Troll Roller able to get a kill on top of Bounty. Bounty going down. That's not good at all. Uh, Beast Buster throws out the throws out the call of the wall so he can scout everything. He sees everybody. He can't turn around. Throws ulti. Do bring it. Throws the ulti on top. Throws this, throws this ulti on top. Bat Rider. Bat Rider is gonna get. Uh, quite a bit of damage done to him. He does get caught on the ice shards. He's able to make it out alive because I think his firefly was still up. I don't know. I lagged a little bit. And he will be finally going down to the Doombringer's ulti. Uh, meanwhile, we see who's his beast are hiding inside the trees. He does still has still have his ulti, so he can't use it if he needs to. Uh, meanwhile, Lil Drew does find him. This beast is getting hit by everything. He gets destroyed, demolished. Meanwhile, Ricky is over here. Ricky tries to see if he can pick up anybody, but there's nobody he can pick up. Dyer's top tower has and it looks fallen. like he took a a total one or three three sixty and he's going straight for that defusal blade as opposed to going for that uh Yasha that I was calling earlier. Fastest blade in the land. And he finds himself a haste room, cool. So haste room for Ricky, Ricky will be able to see if he can try to catch on somebody real fast and he can run away as well. Uh, Troll War Troll Warlord and allies will be destroying this tower. Bear is level four, so Bear is doing quite a bit of damage to towers, he's doing an extra thirty or extra 40% bonus damage to buildings, Jesus. Uh, dust pop by the radius side. They want to see if they can catch themselves a bounty hunter or a Ricky, but they're, they're all over here. They're good. They're fine. I don't know if the Dyer did see that dust get popped, but even if they did, they don't really care. Uh, Tuska throws out the... So, sorry, Tuska throws out the Ice Watch, throws out everything on top of Bat Rider. Bat Rider able to stay alive because Pudge threw his hook when the Bat Rider... Um, when Bower is in the air, and that's safe, that pretty much ends Tuscar's life. So that ulti from Tuscar definitely definitely kept these guys from getting that kill on top of um, Bat Rider. And now these guys are on the run. Now Lundra is getting stalked by the Bounty Hunter. He will be able to make it up on though. Uh, this, 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 all, all the Dyer can do is do a little bit of damage. Beastmaster does not have his ulti. He did just use it, I think. No, he used the last. No, yeah, he did just use it. And there's an ulti. I, sorry, there's a war cry thrown out by Lone Druid. And Beastmaster's on the wrong side of the river. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter is trying to see if he can catch him, but there's nobody really here he can catch. And Lone Druid, or not Lone Druid, Beastmaster is taking quite a bit of damage. He's able to make it alive. He's trying to build that Necro Book like I called earlier. He throws out the Whirling Axes. A, a few more auto attacks from um, Troll War. I hear the ulti from Doombringer activated. Ulti from Doombringer activated. Bat Rider, Bat Rider will be able to make it alive. He's just going to jump. Or he, he already Firefly before that was thrown on top of him. So he'll be able to make it out because of that. He can't pop that wand so he can just heal up. Or maybe the wand is muted as well. I don't really know. But he will be not going down. Very, 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 ah, playing it very close. He's able to stay alive. So, so the numbers in his favor. Uh, these, the radiant could go for Roshan. I think that might be rotating towards her. Maybe just rotating down bottom to push that back. But I don't even know. Uh, Lone Druid, uh, Lone Druid, Life Stealer, and Trouble are going toe to toe. Life Stealer does have an armor, so he can't toggle all he wants. And Tuscar gets an ulti on top of Life Stealer. Life Stealer does go down. Snowball from Tuscar, keeping Bounty Hunter down. But Bounty Hunter is able to make it alive. Punch throws the hook. No, he does not throw a hook. He thought about it, but he didn't. Uh, meanwhile, we see Beastmaster die around the backside of that in the jungle. And the Dyer are really, really trying to hold on, but I don't think it's really much for them to hold on to. They need Ricky Dyer's to get his big item already up, and they need Beastmaster to get, or not Beastmaster, Life Stealer to get more farm, so he can do more damage. All he has is the armlet to his name. I uh, hear Orcus. Orcus from Tuscar on top of Batrider. Batrider is getting caught up with everything. Ulti, Snowball, Ulti, and a lot of damage being done. One more auto-attack. There we go. Auto-attack achieved, and Bounty Hunter is in quite a bit of trouble. He was trying to save his ally, but it wasn't enough. And there's Ricky trying to save his allies as well. He throws out the clouds, trying to go for a kill on top of Tuscar, but he gets hooked back by the Pudge, and Pudge is rotting him to death. And there's Ricky making out alive. And these guys are pretty much playing five man five man dodo and they're winning. I was say, if, if that would have killed Ricky, man. If that would have killed Ricky, that would have been pretty funny. Ah, this tea is really good. I need I need to like buy more of that tea. So, starting from the bottom of the way up, as far as items go, we see Barrow trying to build himself a fourth step. He has a blink dagger already, so he can blink in and jump on and get that lasso. But although it has not been working on his favorite in these past fights, he can definitely do that if he really needs to. Uh, so, he, he can definitely do that whenever he sees an opportunity to initiate. Moving on to Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter is broke. He has nothing. He's going for a mana focused Bounty Hunter, as you guys can see. Okay, never mind. He's not broke. He has a Vlad. So, he has a Vlad, and he also has himself Arcane Boots. That's a little unusual. Typically, when you see Bounty Hunters, they go for some other type of boots, like face boots or maybe even Trinkle boots. Oh, guys, who's getting cut off? We see. We see Life Still getting caught up. Life Still does go down pretty fast. Ulti from Bat Rider throwing on top of Tusk, or throwing on top of somebody, but it doesn't really matter. He's pulling everybody right behind him. These guys are destroying him. Uh, two people on the radio side are low, but no more Dyer here to support him. Ricky is the only one who can, who's here who can pick anybody off. Excuse me, but I'm pretty sure he does want to stay alive. He wants to stay alive for just a little bit longer. And he's gonna run total. He's gonna sorry. He's gonna run side by side to the Doombringer. I think if Doombringer were paying attention, he, or if Doombringer is paying attention, he could know that Ricky's following him. But nobody's responding just yet. We got TP's coming down bottom. We got DC coming down from Life Still. I hope he does reconnect. Uh, Roar from Beastmaster on top of 
whoever that was. I think that was Pudge. Yes, Pudge does get rolled up, and Beastmaster does get stuck in the trees, and he goes down. But this bottom tower will be going down. It does get denied, though. Bottom tower has been denied. And this Beastmaster just just a little bit angry. Just a little bit angry at how things went just then. Yes, continue on with the items. Uh, Beastmaster is trying to build that Necro level three. Like I said earlier. He is going for that kind of Beastmaster, where he'll just get all those auras and just keep his out, uh, keep his familiars alive and just Marco's, Marco those very well. But things have not been going his way at all. Uh, Lifestyle does reconnect. He's going to go ahead and TP down bottom so he can help his team with this fight. Uh, there will be a bear getting caught up. A bear might be going down. No, none of damage to bear. Bear's going to try to get an entangle on top of Batroid. If he can get an entangle, Batroid will be able to make it alive. There's a mega kill going for Tusker around the back. I mean, with the ultimate from Batroid, finally throwing it on top of Lone Drew. Lone Drew again pulled back in, and he does go down. Finally, Batroid able to get that kill. Meanwhile, Troll Roll is going to continue to run away. Troll does have that gem on his team, so they're able to spot out the Ricky. They're able to spot out the Bounty Hunter. I think that's how Ricky died as well. Uh, let's see, continue on. Uh, I think I stopped the Beastmaster. As far as Lifesteal goes, Lifesteal is really far behind. He has All he has to his name is an armlet and a... Uh, and power trades. Typically by now you want to see Lifesteal have like a Basher or have something else, have a Melanie, have a Mel Storm at least, or have a Hand of Midas or something to actually compensate for all the gold that he's been losing, but he's been losing a lot of gold. He hasn't been farming as efficiently as he wanted to. So things have been going really, really bad for him. Moving on to Ricky. Ricky is trying to build himself that the Fusal Blade he has. I think he has four pieces of it. He just needs a recipe right now. I think the other pieces in his inventory. Oh, there goes. The Fusal's already up and unstoppable for Tuscar. Tuscar just destroying everything. He kills people a little bit too fast. So Tuscar is able to get a few few more kills. What's what's new, right? And what what is that? What is that? I don't know what that is. <clears throat> uh, we see we see engagement happen on top of um, Doombringer. Doombringer is gonna go ahead and throw out the Toyo so he can get out alive. Uh, silence thrown on top of Ricky so Ricky can't go invisible. Ricky does go down to the Tuscar. Meanwhile, Batrider does um, does ulti Tuscar, but he gets ulti by the Pudge and Pudge will be going down though. Uh, Pudge goes down to the Bounty Hunter. And uh, who did, who's that was just went down? I thought somebody just went down. I couldn't see who that was. Uh, open was thrown on top of thrown on top of Lone Drew. Lone Drew will be able to get entangled, or Bear will be able to get entangled on top of Life Stealer. And now we got a gauge that happened on top of Bound Hunter. Bound Hunter is getting caught up. There's a gem on top of Troll, so these guys can see him. He can't run away. Meanwhile, Life Stealer trying to go toe to toe with these guys, but there's nothing he can do. <laughs> net coming from um, from Doombringer, and now Life Stealer is stuck. Entangle plus Net equals OP, and he got caught in a nice little concave from the Tuscar. So Tuscar definitely snowballing out of control, lol. As you guys can see, uh, that Orkin Malevolent is definitely paying off, and that Blink Dagger definitely helping out with those engagements. As far as the rest of his team, his rest of his team is playing pretty well, like a nice well loaded machine. Uh, Doombringer going for that Tornado Stick is actually really good, a really good idea. I did not consider it at all, but he went for the he went for that Tornado Stick. Tornado Stick definitely helping him out as far as staying alive or catching people out. As Batrider going to be able to blink away because of that Tornado Stick coming from the Doombringer. Doombringer does go ahead and eat himself a creep so he can heal up. I think he healed him. Nope, it doesn't heal him. He goes to eat the creep so he can get some more gold and there's a, or a hook from Pudge saving Tuscar's life. Tuscar snowballs in. He's gonna go for the bounty hunter. Bounty hunter is not gonna, or Ricky. Ricky's not gonna be able to make it out of the line. Meanwhile, Batrider on the backside is able to ulti somebody, but he gets ulti by the Pudge every single time. And there's Batrider getting caught up by everybody, so he goes down. So Pudge is doing a really good job using his hooks at the right time. Uh, basically, ba every, like, that's the second time Batrider tried. Oh no, we gotta get to have him on the backside. Doombringer throws a Doom on top of Bounty Hunter, so Bounty Hunter can't turn invisible. He can't do anything. He's gonna run away. He's useless. Meanwhile, Tuscar ult activates ulti blinks it. He goes for the kill of Snowball to follow up, and there's a kill going to Lone Druid. Uh, Lifestyle's coming around the corner to try to get a kill on top of Pudge. He will be able to get this kill on top of Pudge. There's nothing really he can really do. His teammates can't really help him out because they're low on mana. They're low on HP, and now Troll Wall is gonna come and see if he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I think he will be able to, especially since he has Aegis in. Oh my gosh, there's a net coming from uh, Doombringer. This life's still going down pretty darn fast. And there's a relic up on the bear, so the bear might be getting, um, might be still getting a uh, radiance after all. I honestly thought it'd be a little bit too late for radiance, but it doesn't really matter. This would be like a 30-minute radiance, maybe a 40-minute radiance. But it doesn't really matter. His team is really, uh, really doing well. Tuscar, just show you guys how to play Tuscar. Basically, what you do is you get a blink dagger, so you can do all your damage. Oh, my phone, my phone battery's dying. Oh no, I need that for stuff. And his middle towers are taking damage. His middle towers will be going down. These guys can probably just push the win and then go for it. But uh, Tuscar is a little bit low on mana and HP, and Tuscar has pretty much been the story of this game, to, uh, to be honest. The Blink Dagger definitely paying off. The Orc and Malevolent is definitely a really good choice. I honestly never considered it. But basically, what he does is every single time, uh, whenever he sees the engagement happen, uh, he throws, he activates his ulti, he blinks in, hits you with his ulti, activates, snow, um, activates ice shards, and then activates snowball. And it's like a nice little one two punch combo that hits you with everything. And it's so much damage coming from his, his point of view. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. 
Oh man, I'm out of two. And there's Tuscar activating his ulti on top of a creep, so I can go ahead and farm up. Why not? His ulti only has a 20 second, 18 second cooldown. Not that long at all. To put that in perspective, Troll Wallard's ulti has a 20 second cooldown, which is like the longest cooldown ever. Not really. Uh, ulti from Bower to activate on top of Lone Druid. Lone Druid can pull it in, but there's Troll Wallard around the corner to help him out. And these guys will be on the run. Meanwhile, Lone Druid is still going to kill him. Ricky's in a little bit No, Rick, not Ricky. Troll's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to go toe to toe with this, uh, whoever that was. I, I couldn't see who it was, they died too fast. And now Ricky's gonna be dying for the punch. And the ulti from Beastmaster activated on top of Troll. Troll's gonna be going now, but ages, he does have ages, ages is up. And Punch gets tracked up by the Bounty Hunter. These guys will be running away while they can. Troll's going on the warpath. He gets pulled in. Bounty Hunter gets pulled in. And Punch probably didn't want that, really. He, want, he probably didn't want Bounty Hunter here. Four staff forward on top of Punch. And Troll, I'm sorry, Tuscar coming out at the perfect timing. Able to get the kill on top of that. Who's that four staff from? Punch has a four staff? Ah, Punch has a four staff. And see, guys, this is why I need to look at these items because I have not, I have yet to figure out where these big items are coming from. I think the last person looked. Oh my God, rapier! <laughs> yes, that's what you do, guys. Guys, if the game's not going in your favor, just build a rapier, and you guys can probably win. It's, it's like a ditch, last ditch effort that makes you do massive amounts of damage, and it's also a really, really good idea. Especially if you're going to lose anyway, why not just build a rapier and just call it a day? Bottom barracks are under so anyway, at any rate, uh, we see Beastmaster trying to go in. He has a rapier. He can do a lot of damage. He's going to hit Tuscar once. There's a defusal blade active by Ricky, and Tuscar taking quite a bit of damage. He will be going down. Uh, Beastmaster throws the axes in. These guys want to kill Beastmaster because he has a because, because he has a rapier. So Beastmaster acting as bait, really. And there's a uh, there's a t troll lord finally going down. Tuscar was able to make it out alive because he had blink dagger and because he can just throw ice shards and just be annoying. Uh, it looks like he might be going over. Yes, he will be going up for a gauge on top of on top of lifestyle. There we go. The combination I just talked about before, and lifestyle will be going out. He is silent stuff. He's gonna be taking that burn. Uh, Puzz is definitely helping out with the nuke damage as well. Orchid burn. That's what's called. And yo, on the back side, we see Doombring is getting, uh, trying to catch up Bat Rider. Bat Rider does get hit with the ulti, but it doesn't matter. Doombring is getting chased, and he's trying to do as much damage as possible. He's getting body blocked by the boar from Beastmaster. He was getting body blocked. And oh my God! As Long Drew is coming from middle of nowhere, he's doing massive amounts of damage. Bear does not have radiance just yet. I thought the bear was getting radiance, but obviously the bear doesn't have radiance just yet. Uh, whoa, what's going on? I thought Doombringer died. No, Batrider died. Okay, I'm sorry. Batrider died. Uh, we see Bounder here taking a little bit of damage. Tusker activates his ult. He's trying to see if he can find himself. A quick kill on top of Ricky. He's able to ult it. So Ricky, so Ricky can't turn invisible, and Ricky's going to be able to make it alive in that engagement. Uh, there's a walrus punch thrown on top of a creep. And Bounder is walking around the corner. Bounder here will be going down. There was vision over here. Tusker does have a gem of his own. I think it might be his ally's old gem. gets my seal of approval. And <laughs> I see what you did there. That gets my seal of approval. Tusco's activated. Zolz is going to blink and throw out all his abilities as far as fast as possible. At Lincoln Sphere pop, so he was not. Or no. Somebody tried to throw something on top of him, but it wasn't enough. Sigil activated as well, so slow down everybody. Make sure they can not run. And this is pretty much a really, really one-sided game by the radio. I mean, as you guys can see, I have, I have had a lot of time to look at the items, but it doesn't really matter for me to look at the items. Doombringer finds himself a uh, piece of stuff of a refresher. Those on top of Lifesteal, Lifesteal will not be able to do anything for a whole few seconds. And Doombringer gets pulled into the pit. He will be going out. Lifesteal able to get the kill. No, Tornado Stick activated by Doombringer. Doombringer might be able to make it alive. No, he will not be able to make it alive. Batrider will be get that kill. And ulti from Pudge. So on top of Ricky, Ricky will be going out. Ghost stuff to activate by Pudge, so he will be taking nearly as much damage. Uh, beautiful ice. Oh no, never mind. Not beautiful ice shots, but ice shots don't by the Tuscar. And this, these guys are pretty much just running around, derping around before his game ends. Life still jumps inside of a creep, and he jumps outside of the creep so he can get a little bit more HP, so he can do a little bit of damage, but it's not really all that much damage. Troll basically felt, you know, didn't really feel that. Tuscar tried to activate his ulti, but it, they, some, I'm oh, sorry, Batrider blinked out before he was able to hit it, or forced that forward before he was able to hit it. And this Ancient will be going on soon. Soon. Soonish. Come on, guys, kill the ancient. There we go. Troll Wallace activates the ulti as permits to the call for these guys. Go ahead and go for it. Life Shield is trying to do as much damage as possible, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't, he is, he's not able to do much. It's like he's hitting like a little kitten. Uh, it's, it's like when a kitten tries to scratch you, but it's not enough damage to actually do anything to you. Except for maybe break the skin a little bit. But even if it does break the skin, it's not like a bleeding flesh wound where everything's coming out. It's like your bone is showing and stuff. It's just, it's just a nice little small scratch. Mm. Anyway, I was, I was a little bit graphic, a little bit more graphic than I wanted it to be. But anyway, uh, my name is Cool Blue. I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. And like I said, I'm live streaming this. I did drop out, so I will be stitching the videos together at the end of this. But you guys don't really care about that because you guys will probably see one whole video all together. And um, I think I might be doing a view replay cast on a live stream as well. But I'm kind of skeptical to do that because I want my view replay cast to go all the way through. But I need to hurry up and do it because they keep expiring on me. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you guys whenever.